The days are getting colder and the sun is setting sooner, so that means it is time to figure out what books I'll be reading in autumn. I am so excited for the changing seasons and I have some very very exciting plans coming up that will also dictate what I will be reading. I will be traveling around the end of September for most of autumn, which is why I recently got myself a Kindle. I have my first book here already on my Kindle, and I don't think I'm going to bring a ton of books, like physical books with me. I'm mainly going to bring my Kindle. I'm going to have no self-control. I'm going to be buying a lot of books when I'm there. A few of the books on this list I am probably going to be picking up there. Um, I'm very excited to tell you where, but I don't think I'm going to tell you yet. I'm extremely excited. So, the first book that I have to read in September and October for the Game of Tomes book club that I co-host with Emma is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. And this is set in England. It is about magicians and... I don't really want to know too much else. thought that it was the perfect big book to fit the vibe of the autumnal season. After finishing 1Q84, which was... I have no words for 1Q84, but this... I just feel like I need very, very different books, which is good because 1Q84 is so unique. But I'm really excited for a magical, kind of fantasy-esque magical realism type book set in England, and I think this is just going to be perfect. So I'm very, very excited to read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. I've heard amazing things about it. Another book that I'm thinking about starting that is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. If you guys have been here recently, then you know that I have been talking about wanting to read this book for ages. I started reading it. I read the first three chapters, I believe, and I just didn't continue on because I was reading so many other books, especially for the book club that I had a time constraint with. So I prioritized those books and didn't prioritize East of Eden, but I would really, really love to read East of Eden still. So that one, I have it on my Kindle, as you can see. So it is here if I want to read it, and I really do. Um, it really just depends on how much time I have and if I can fit it in with my other reading that's a bit more uh, pressing because I have time constraints for different reasons, but I'm very excited to potentially keep reading East of Eden. I would really, really love to try and make time for it. And then the next book I started physically reading, and then I also am listening to the audiobook, and I'm really excited about it. That is Ben Fogel's Inspire, Life Lessons from the Wilderness, and this is a fantastic book about Ben Fogel's adventures and what his adventures in the wilderness and in the wild taught him about life. I think I'm in the middle of chapter two, and it's such an interesting perspective on his life and how his experiences just taught him about, taught him different life lessons. He does narrate the audiobook himself, which I always enjoy, especially when I'm reading nonfiction. The next book I have been reading since 2021, <laughs> and I am purposefully taking my time with it because it is a beautiful poetry collection by Mary Oliver. I'm going to continue to read these physically until I leave at the end of September, but this is Devotion, so this is a wonderful big collection of Mary Oliver's poetry. Her poems are so approachable and beautiful. They're about her connection with nature and wildlife and how, again, kind of like Ben Fogel, you can learn so much about yourself and life in general and humanity through nature. And I just love her poetry. Super approachable for people who may not be super comfortable with poetry. I think she's a great poet to introduce you or kind of welcome you into the world of poetry. The next book I pre-ordered, I am ridiculously excited about it. It will be arriving on September 17th, which is the day that it is released, and that is The Third Gilmore Girl by Kelly Bishop. I am a ridiculously huge fan of Gilmore Girls. I have been for literally years, and that is probably my all-time favorite show. Um, I feel like my heart and soul is just in that show. Kelly Bishop is the actress who plays the third Gilmore Girl, which is Emily Gilmore. She is Lorelai's mother. Gilmore Girls mainly follows Lorelai and Rory, who is the mother-daughter, um, main, the two main characters of the show, but we also follow another very main character is Lorelai's mother, Emily, and 
Kelly Bishop is the actress who plays Emily and she wrote, I believe it's just a memoir um, about her time working on Gilmore Girls and I believe it's just about her life as well and I am ridiculously, ridiculously excited to read this book because I love Kelly Bishop. I love her portrayal of Emily. Emily is one of my favorite characters. She's so complex and funny and some she has some of my favorite lines and I just can't wait to hear more about her experience um, acting as Emily and just portraying that role and her experience on Gilmore Girls. So extremely excited about that one. That one I'm definitely going to speed read as soon as it arrives and try and finish it before I leave because I'm not probably not going to bring, it's another hardback, I'm not going to want to bring that on the plane with me, but I'm very excited for that one and oh my gosh, I just, I can't wait. The next book is another new release that I am extremely, extremely excited about and that is Sally Rooney's Intermezzo, which is coming out on September 24th and I will be picking up my copy when I arrive to where I am going. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I love Sally Rooney so much. She's one of my favorite literary fiction writers and one of my favorite authors in general and I truly cannot wait. I sort of know what it's about but I also don't want to know too much. I believe it's about two brothers who are grieving the loss of their father and chess plays a role in it as well. So we will see. We will see. I'm very excited. Don't want to know too much but yeah can't wait. The next one I have here with me is one that I'm going to try to read before I leave and that is Kazuo Ishiguro's Come Rain or Come Shine. This is in the Faber Stories collection edition. This is a short story by Kazuo Ishiguro that I don't know anything about because it's <laughs> very tiny and I want to be pleasantly surprised. But I recently read Kazuo Shiguro's newest book, which is a book of lyrics that he wrote for Stacey Kent, who is a wonderful jazz musician and jazz singer. Um, and I've been really in the mood to read more Ishiguro, but I don't think I'll have time to read a full novel of his. So I have this short story by him that I would really love to read. Hopefully I'll get to that one before I leave. And then the next one, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to or I could potentially borrow a copy through my library and get it on my Kindle. And that is Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. You guys voted for this book in the video that I filmed about the oldest books on my TBR. I mentioned, I think, five or six books that have been on my TBR the longest. This was one of them and this was the one that had the most votes that I should read. So I... Don't know if I'll have time to read it before I go, but I really, really want to read this one. It has something to do with the main character has a very high IQ, and it also has something to do with mice and neuroscience. That is, <laughs> that's all I know, that's all I want to know. I've heard amazing things, I've heard that it's going to tear my heart out, and I'm very excited because I love a good emotionally devastating read. I filmed that video a little while ago and I have yet to read it so I do still plan on reading it and hopefully I'll read it sooner rather than later. Okay we are now moving on to books that have an autumnal vibe which is why we're all here. At least that's why I'm here. The first one is Arthur Conan Doyle's A Study in Scarlet. I have yet to read any Sherlock Holmes books and I think that that's very shocking. I feel like I should have by now. So this is the first book, I believe, in the Sherlock Holmes series and that is, of course, A Study in Scarlet. I don't know too much about this book. Obviously, I know that it's a mystery. It's a murder mystery um, where we follow... Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Again, I feel like I should have read it by now and it is the perfect time, I feel like, to read a Sherlock Holmes murder mystery. I also feel like Autumn is the perfect time to read any book by Daphne du Maurier, but the book that I'm thinking of picking up is Jamaica Inn, which is in this beautiful edition by Virago, um, Virago Modern Classics, and I probably won't be taking this book with me, but hopefully I'll be able to find it on Kindle. I would love to read it from this edition, but again, it's like a hardback, it's quite heavy. I'm probably just gonna have to find it on Kindle or something. Again, I don't wanna know, I feel so bad. I made a whole video recently about books that I think you should read without knowing anything about the plot. All of Daphne du Maurier's books I feel that way about. I feel like you shouldn't know anything about them. You should go in blind and be surprised because she's such a wonderfully suspenseful writer. So I don't know anything about Jamaica Inn and I kind of want to keep it that way so I hope that's okay. 
but I love Daphne du Maurier's writing. I have read Rebecca and my cousin Rachel now, and I really want to read more from her. So next I have is Jamaica Inn, which I also feel like would be perfect for Autumn. The next one is another one that I'm surprised I haven't read yet, and I'm kind of ashamed that I haven't read yet, and that is The Death of Ivan Ilyich by Leo Tolstoy. My man. My man Tolstoy. This is number 87 in the Penguin Little Black Classic series, and again, don't want to know too much, but the back says, laying humanity bare, these two devastating stories ask, is it possible to have a good death, and what does it mean to truly live? Ugh. Two very good questions. Um, I love Tolstoy's writing. He is my favorite classic author, and I am extremely excited about this. I also feel like it does fit the vibe of Autumn, and it's a nice short one, two short stories. I love Tolstoy's short stories and everything that he writes, um, so I'm very excited about this one, of course. Like I said about all these books, sorry, I keep saying excited. It's just a reflex. <laughs> very excited to pick this one up. <laughs> The next one I feel like fits the sorrowful autumnal vibes, and that is The Sorrows of Young Werther, or Werther, by Goethe. And I've heard really wonderful, devastating things about this book. I think what I've heard is that this book is just really heartbreaking and devastating. Um, and those are some of my favorite books because I love when books just make you feel deeply. I think that that's one of the most beautiful things to experience as a reader. The back has a quote and it says, be on your guard and take care not to fall in love. It says, visiting an idyllic German village, Werther, a sensitive and rom romantic young man, falls in love with a sweet-natured girl. And then it goes on to, I think it's about unrequited love, potentially, translated with an introduction by Michael Hulse. This next one I'll definitely get on my Kindle because it is quite a big and heavy book. And this is one that I have been, <laughs> I started reading and then I stopped reading because I wasn't really in the mood for it last year or even the year before that. I've been meaning to finish this book for actual ages and this is the year that I'm going to do it. I promise you, just watch me. And that is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This is about Shakespeare's family and his, primarily his son Hamnet and it's about their lives. It almost feels kind of like magical realism or fantasy, but it's not. It, the way that she writes it just feels so enchanting and kind of whimsical in a strange way, and I don't know how to explain it, but um, I did start reading this book, and I was really enjoying it. I just, I'm a huge mood reader, and I just felt like I wasn't in the ideal mood. I do feel like it is the perfect book to read, or the perfect time to read it would be in autumn. Um, just the atmosphere and the whole tone of the story, I think, fits autumn very well, and I will force myself to finish this book. The next one is another one that I've been meaning to read for ages, and that is The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. This is a beautiful Penguin Deluxe Edition, and it has an introduction by Kelly Link. Obviously, The Bloody Chamber. I feel like just you can tell from the title that it will be perfect for Autumn. I don't want to know too much about it. Again, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, but like I said, they do feel very autumnal, fable-esque. Surprisingly enough, I haven't read any Angela Carter before, so that's why I have been really meaning to pick this up for so long. I am very much interested in her work because I've heard incredible things about her writing, and I do think that now, or autumn is the perfect time to pick up her work. And then the last one I have here is another book that I have been meaning to read for ages. I absolutely love the movie and that is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I picked up this book quite a few years ago now, and this is the US edition. I really don't like this edition. I, I don't love when books have like the shiny paperback covers. I recently discovered the UK edition. It is absolutely gorgeous. This book was actually on quite a few lists of books that are perfect to read in autumn because I was looking up different lists while I was curating mine and a lot of people said that this book is great to read in autumn. Again, I love the movie so much. It's one of my favorite Studio Ghibli movies, and I have been meaning to read the book for ages, and I haven't yet. Hopefully I will pick up a prettier edition of this book, and then maybe I can donate this one uh, to my library, and then someone else can, can enjoy the story as well, who's not as picky. <laughs> I don't mind. 
I don't mind the cover. Like, I would read it with this cover. I don't want to sound snobbish. I just really love the other cover so much more. I am an illustrator. I do have to come to my own defense. I am an illustrator, and one of my greatest passions is collecting books with beautiful illustrations because they're like collecting works of art. But anyway, um, those are all of the books that I believe I wanted to share with you. Oh, other books that I would potentially like to pick up on my travels is The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien and The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, which I'm so, so excited. There's my favorite word. <laughs> I am extremely excited to pick those two up because after finishing Lord of the Rings, I just need more Tolkien in my life. I need more Tom Bombadil and Goldberry in my life. I also feel like those two would be perfect for the autumnal and winter season. So yeah, I have those on my radar as well. But these are all the books that I'm hoping to read before my travels, during my travels, and for all of autumn. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I would love, love, love to know what books you're reading or want to read and planning to read for the autumnal season. So definitely let me know in the comments. I hope that you maybe found something that piqued your interest on my list and maybe I could find something that would pique my interest on one of your lists. So that's why I love hearing what you guys are planning on reading and I'm always just nosy and curious. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for always being so kind and lovely and wonderful. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video and happy reading.